Let's paint a picture of an economy. On the one hand, more jobs, lower unemployment, higher wages, and stock markets. But on the other hand, backups at ports and rail yards, companies struggling to meet demand, prices rising too much too fast. It's the story of the U.S. in 2021 and the historic return of inflation. Costs rising across the country. Runaway costs. Food, gas, electricity, housing. Consumer prices remain too high. It came gradually and then suddenly. Crude oil prices crept higher, then jumped in February. It was gasoline prices heading into March, then lumber and used cars in April. U.S. consumer prices, a key measure of inflation, have been climbing almost every month since, rising to 6.8% in November, the highest since 1982. Consumers, when they're going to stores, are feeling it. And here on the back end, when we're looking at a lot of this data, you can see it really rippling through the economy. So everything from gas prices, food prices, raw goods, lumber or metals, you're seeing those prices going up, off into multi-decade highs. There is plenty of argument about how it happened and who's at fault, but we know it wasn't any one thing. A fast and huge rebound in spending was partly to blame. Americans started buying things again after holding back during the early months of the pandemic using cash from emergency government programs. And as demand was picking up, a lot of companies were slow to restart, struggling to get supplies and to bring people back to work. That plus outdated infrastructure helped gum up production. So fewer goods and services available plus rising demand equals higher prices. The prices are going all the way from the boat to the port where they're often stuck, to the shipping companies and the transportation companies who don't have enough truck drivers, to manufacturing plants, to the consumer. Now, most economists agree that the government also had something to do with this. Both the Trump and Biden administrations passed spending bills that sent trillions of dollars into the economy through government agencies, infrastructure investment, and by giving money straight to Americans. And then, of course, there's the Federal Reserve. It pumped even more cash into the economy and cut rates to near zero, making it cheaper and easier for banks to borrow and loan money. All those factors combined to help push inflation up to where it is now. Too high. Uncomfortably high. Multi-decade high. Today, it's the Federal Reserve more than anyone else who could put the brakes on inflation, but it's taking its time. And that's because it's got a tough choice. If it puts the brakes on hard, it would probably reduce inflation, but it could also slow down or even stop the economic recovery completely. On the other hand, the Fed could slowly lift its foot off the gas and hope inflation mostly dies down on its own. That's what the Fed's been doing so far. They're going to be very careful. The Federal Reserve is definitely keeping in mind that they're working with an economy that is still recovering. One reason policymakers are being so careful is that they don't want to make the same mistake as last time. After the Great Recession, some people think the Federal Reserve hit the brakes too soon and the recovery was weaker than it could have been. This time around, the more generous economic policy has been largely successful. All that money the Fed and the last two administrations dumped into the economy is partly why the recovery was so much stronger than after 2008 and why it's been faster in the U.S. than in other major economies. Really, there's been a huge recovery. A huge V-shaped recovery. The U.S. recovery will continue being stronger. U.S. growth recovery and continued strength looks more positive than we see in the rest of the developed world. We're experiencing the strongest economic recovery in the world. So what does that all mean for us? Well, no matter what happens, we're likely to have high inflation for at least the next few months. Economists are expecting prices to rise 3.7% next year, still above the 2% that the Fed is aiming for, but that's lower than it has been. And as energy costs pull back and supply chain issues improve, there are signs inflation should start easing up. We are pretty much at peak inflation from the supply chain issues right now. Already starting to see some moderation of some of the inflation pressures. Signs that some of these supply shocks are loosening up. We're past the peak inflation in terms of markets pricing that in. We've reached the peak and passed the peak in inflation hysteria. In the end, the truth is we don't know what happens next. Plenty of investors and economists got the inflation call wrong the first time, and it could catch us by surprise again. But we do know that a dangerous price spiral leading to an economic meltdown is pretty unlikely. The Federal Reserve should be able to step in and keep things from getting out of hand if prices keep rising too much too fast. And when we paint that picture of the U.S. economy that's got a problem, we also have to see that it's just part of the story. There's another picture, the opposite side of the same coin, 
one that shows a record-setting recovery blowing past the global competition, faster growth, more money, and more jobs, all made possible by the same decisions and policies that helped push inflation higher. One of these two pictures will probably define the post-pandemic era for economists. In the new year, we'll see which one.